Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Uh, as you can see, this time I'm finally getting around to finishing off this Amiga 500 Plus. Um, last time I looked at this was about ooh, 18 months ago at least, I think. It's just been on my list of things to do and I've just got uh, pulled in different directions and uh, just other things have it consumed my time really. So I'll get the lid off this now, I'll have a quick look at the board, um, show you a couple of close-ups and then just explain the, just the few actions I'm going to carry out on this really today. So there you go, you can see the area that was cleaned up previously. It's still corroded a little bit. Um, it's got traditional, more traditional rust. It's been stored in a bit of a damp area, this actually, so um, it's no surprise. But I think what I'm going to do in the first instance is remove this chip here. Um, this one down here is okay. It seemed to be just predominantly around this area here. It hadn't gone to any of the under, uh, underneath of the uh, other um, larger dip uh, chips. You know, these are all good you know the connections around there were okay it was just this sort of surround surrounding area here so uh, I will have another go at cleaning this up um, remove this chip I'll probably remove these components again clean up the pads um, I'll show you you know how you clean some of these components up you don't necessarily need to replace them um, although they're pretty cheap to do you know to replace these so it's probably a wise idea if you you know if you want if you're that way inclined but I prefer just to clean these up put the original components back on um, and I'll just see if I can get this 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 area a little bit cleaner um, and see if anything else needs to be done really uh, one thing I haven't done yet is check the connectivity to some of the um, car you know the pins on the cart port or not the cart port expansion port down here um, I need to, to check that as well um, but right now I'm just going to desolder this chip. I'd forgotten how much of a pain in the ass these were to work on actually. You've got to remove all these uh, hex screws first um, and they can be quite difficult to get out because you know if you've got something like this here you know you've got quite a fine gap between the edge um, and the actual nut there but if you take your time um, you should be able to get all these out without too much effort. You can always use some pliers just to loosen them out and then free, free, you know, free wheel them all the way. Okay, well I got the chip off there, that was particularly difficult. You can just about see here some of the uh, through hole plates and whatever it is that joins, you know, that goes through the centre. It's just come off on a couple of the pins and in fact it looks like we've got, it's, it's the pad there that's eaten away. Um, it's probably come off actually with that particular pin. Is it the fourth one, two, third one along? All the other uh, pins are okay, the traces are okay, but this is where the corrosion was primarily. It was very, it was proving very difficult to get that off there. I used my desoldering station a fair bit. It's taken me about 15 minutes to get that off. Um, but yeah, so I'll clean this up with some desolder braid now um, and some flux. So as you can see, I've got the socket on there now, um, and I've cleaned up a fair bit. Um, lots of the vias have been reflowed. The vias underneath the socket were reflowed. I still need to put the patch uh, patch wire there onto pin three underneath, and I think goes to the top um, third pin on this um, chip up here. Um, but you can see I've removed the cap that was across there, cleaned up the board around there a little bit as well. Um, spent a bit of time re-cleaning up that whole that whole area there, just removing the corrosion. Um, Hopefully I've not done any more damage to this, it's very difficult to tell whether it's got worse um, in the time that it's just been sat around, um, so I guess time will tell. Um, but it, I just want to show you in terms of cleaning components up, you can see the legs go pretty black on some of these. Now you can just swap them out, but I tend, tend to prefer to clean them up just with a bit of sandpaper. Um, if you just go over the um, you know the edges of the legs like this, from all angles, as you can see, you can get the... Uh, so you might not be able to see actually it's pretty hard to focus on that um, but you get you can get all the oxidization and uh, corrosion off there um, so it's worth doing that I guess spend a bit of time cleaning them up um, get them looking good as new again um, and then you should be able to solder it back on it should make a good solder point uh, connection there I'm just getting near the end here now I didn't want to bore you with um, all of the the work that I've been doing here showing you the soldering and desoldering. What I did do is, uh, I don't know if you can see, I've reflowed all the connections here. I did take one or two of these components out. They're all okay. The connections on this side were good. Um, I've heated this or scratched this area considerably to remove most of the corrosion. There's still a bit of a bullseye there in the middle that could perhaps need, use a bit more work, but I'm going to treat that with um, a little bit of. Um, vinegar or something I think and just leave it um, it is right in the middle there and it's you know it's just one of, I think it's the supply line actually um, um, but as you can see I've you know scratched it uh, and then use the desolder braid and solder and just 
covered it with a bit of a, a solder mask to a degree. Um, it's very, it's been very, very difficult to do this. I, I have to admit, these um, the vias. There's plenty of vias you can see around here. And what you've got to do is, you know, get something like this with a, a fine point on it and scratch around the surface of the vias. Be careful you don't scratch any pads, you know, traces that come into the vias off. But that's what's required to get the crystallized sort of solder. Um, well, it's a combination of solder and alkaline, I think, or, uh, or it could even be acid on these type of batteries, I'm not sure. Um, it's probably alkaline um, that sort of goes on the surface, it eats the solder, and it goes into like a, a crystallised, mucky mess. It's hard to explain, really. It's, um, I'll just clean those out. Um, but yeah, so as you can see, it's looking um, a bit better. I wouldn't say a lot better. Um, it was a good job I replaced that chip because that chip, as I you know showed, once I took it off there, it didn't work. It didn't work at all when I put it back in the socket, even though the legs are nice and clean. So um, I think the corrosion had eaten its way into that chip, but it was local. You know, the acid damage on here, right, alkaline damage, was localized to this this sort of area around here. So um, it's not got as low as here. It's not got as high up as the Gary. Um, on the other 500 plus, I uh, I've got that repair. I had to do some, you know, considerably more work. I had to remove one of the sites, CIA sockets at the back, um, remove the Gary socket, replace those, and pretty much remove everything around this area here because it had gone quite, you know, quite a distance. Um, I've reflowed the solder on these um, resistors and diodes and things here as well. So, you know, hopefully you can see they're pretty good. They're pretty good connections there. Um, and then the, there were two wires I had on here from the previous video that you'd seen. Uh, if I flip the board over, you can see we've now got, uh, I think, four wires there. One of these, this one here, um, is a result of some of the cleanup work. Uh, I'll show you if I just turn it back over again. Um, you may remember this cap looking pretty crusty in the previous video. It's, you know, it's, it's got, uh, hopefully you can see, nice, shiny, clean solder points that, you know, that on both sides. The pads uh, made really good. Um, connections with the board there after we're doing some cleanup work but the, one of the traces that comes up here um, you can see there's a gap that that was actually silver originally and just from heating it a few times it's there's a, there's a piece come off you know the pad that joins this pad here to this larger um, area of solder here um, is, is gone so there is a, still a connection it's just one of the supply lines I think there is still a connection I measured and there was continuity despite the fact there's no track in between but I thought well actually I'm not going to just rely on the connectivity from elsewhere wherever that's you know joined up um, just current wise it'd be a good idea to have um, you know a, a replacement for that so that's what that trace was there um, two of these I forget which one I think uh, this one and that one with the original wires um, and then the, they've got the wire there that you know as I explained previously when I removed the uh, 74LS244N um, I did remove um, a pad well yeah I think I, I think it was me that did it um, one of the things I haven't shown you know is, is I touched upon it a minute ago is cleaning up these wires it's important you clean up all the wires so I've done all the wires the wires that were underneath this chip before I put the chip back on um, I'll try and get you a bit of a super macro now but don't expect this to look nice and tidy because it's damn near impossible and you'll know what I mean if you've had a go at doing one of these yourselves that the damage um, you know the acid does even when you sc scrape you know you've got to scratch the pads uh, to try and get the stuff off the top there the oxidizer well not really oxidization but you know the acid damage the crystallized stuff it's really difficult to try and get it back to bare copper even when you do um, even with good quality flux it's very difficult to get the solder to flow evenly so some of these um, vias look a little bit weird you know but you can tell the, the good um, I've tested continent connectivity and stuff there's good connectivity there so everything's okay with regards to the car port here um, I used this diagram I don't know what I've shown this previously I'll post a link to this down below I don't know where I originally got this from someone sent me a link to it um, so I'll attach it in the video description down below and you can uh, use that yourself if you need to um, that socket doesn't look quite straight it's, it's a nice straight socket I don't know if you can tell it's just the chip was a little bit um, misaligned in it as Alison Shellis said these boards uh, are full of soul as you can see it's a B52 rock lobster here um, Rev8 um, and the A500 plus as you know they're, they're always they're going to be going down in uh, volume um, of these things just because of the batteries you know many people are just throwing them and scrapping them and stuff um, so I'm quite pleased I've managed to get this one working again. So all reassembled and back together and connected up here. It's looking pretty good. Um, as you can see, we've got the uh, boot screen there. So I'll just get some floppies and we'll test the few games out, just make sure it's working. So it's just booted a bit of uh, June here, I think this is. 
but yeah, it does seem to be working all right. Noisy drive. Uh, I did clean the drive up actually. I think I probably covered that in a previous video. I might not have uploaded that video yet, but it just needed the typical, you know, uh, cotton buds and a bit of isoprop um, heads cleaning. Sometimes you have to demagnetize those heads, but uh, yeah, not in this instance. Let me just see if the sound's working. Put the headphones on. Yeah, yeah, sounds working fine. I'll turn the volume up really loud, put the headphones nearby, hopefully be able to hear it. Don't know if you can just about hear that. But yeah, it's working, it's working in stereo. Because that's sometimes one of the problems you get with the, uh, you know, once you get the uh, corrosion in there, sometimes you can lose sound as well. So it's always worth uh, you know checking every piece of functionality is working. So one thing I've not done is lubricate this drive. So I've just taken it to pieces here, or I am taking it to pieces, um, and I'm just going to get some lubrication onto the rails there. Just see if I can uh, make it a bit less noisy because at the moment it's quite loud. Um, yeah, there's always that screw there. I always forget. So all I'm going to do here, I don't know if you can see this. It's a bit gunky. The the stuff that's on there. Use a bit of a you know a cotton body with some isoprop IPA alcohol. You know as near to 100% as you can get it, um, and just try and clean this up a bit. Um, it can be a bit difficult actually. Sometimes you have to there you go. You can rotate with your finger in order to expose this area here, um, and just clean all that off and get some fresh. Um, you need probably something like a lithium based grease or something but even just a standard which I'm just going to use now standard sort of general purpose a bit of oil on there that will do the trick um, really that's all you need yeah it's not too bad now it collects dust um, over the years and things and that will certainly add to noise Just a really short video of this, just cleaning a floppy drive here. Uh, this is from an Amiga 1200. Um, I bought it with a job lot recently. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the Amiga at all, uh, thank God. Um, it's in good condition apart from some yellowing. Um, but the floppy drive uh, just needs a good clean. I know you can see this. It's, as you look into here, uh, where the heads are, it's, there's a quite a lot of dust and fluff and stuff in there. I don't know how well that's going to come out. The light's not very good in here. Um, but all you need is a cotton bud with some isoprop on it. Um, and just to start with, just go round the head on the inside there, just to get all the dust from. So you can, I'm collecting it there. You can see there's loads of it coming out um, to get the the, the the first sort of um, you know all the loose particles and things. Um, and you can gently go over the head with it as well at that point. But just try and pull all the stuff out like that, um, and just do that a few times with a few different cotton buds until you've got the majority of the fluff um, out of the mechanism there. Um, and if you need to, you know, have a look down the slot here and just see if there's anywhere else inside that would benefit. You know, if you can see any other dust anywhere that would benefit perhaps from the cotton bud, just going around like that to try and collect it all and remove it from the mechanism. Um, it's not too bad to be fair, there's only a little bit. It's all simply focused around the, the head itself. Uh, so I'll just get in the cotton bud here. So in terms of cleaning the heads themselves, what I tend to do, uh, I'll see if I can get this so you can see what I'm doing, is just lift it slightly like that, just hold it with your other finger. You don't want to bend it, um, and then just put the cotton bud in there. Um, it's not easy to film this actually as I'm doing it. Um, and just put a bit of pressure if you can, just move from side to side, gently on the top of the head there. Um, you can see, actually, I don't know how well what's going to come out on the camera there, can you see that bit of shit? On the end, that's just come off the head. Um, so I'll repeat that a few times um, until I'm sure the head is completely clean. And then you want to do the same thing with the top head because there are two. So, you know, sometimes holding it this way up like that, very carefully. You don't want to bend it because, uh, you know, you're going to alter the alignment. And same thing, just rub, rub the wet cotton bud sideways on the head there. Uh, several times.
yeah that one's not too bad um, and that's it really um, sometimes you get problems with the switches on these drives so sometimes a bit of switch cleaner or something in there can help with the contacts um, but I think they're okay in this instance so I'll just clean, uh, re reassemble this now and give it a try there you go you can see I've just managed to format a disc there now it says empty previously it was failing uh, on most formats uh, you know every time you'd format it would fail and it would fail to read a lot of discs it's now formatting perfectly okay um, and reading every disc I've thrown at it can you hear that? hardly makes a noise now something I just want to mention here before I go I've just been testing out a copy of uh, my old uh, copy of uh, John Jones and the Fate of Atlantis and oh my god at the amount of disc swaps but disc 1 then disc 2 then disc 1 disc 2 disc 1 disc 2 disc 1 disc 2 disc 1 disc 2 disc 11 then disc 2 and then we're back to insert disc 1 it's just like <laughs> I haven't even got the game started yet it's absolutely insane so if there was ever a good reason to get an Amiga 1200 you know or an ACA 500 for something for this you know you can plug in the side there plug in a 1200 accelerator and make use of a compact flash card yeah don't be messing around with discs <laughs> it's painful anyway thanks for watching I'll see you soon